Okay, I mentioned I was going to talk about some challenges within IoT, and that's what we'll talk about in this video. And there's a few different ones. And the first one we could define as platform fragmentation. Here we've got a huge different variety of different uh, nodes, protocols, devices, communications technologies, and they don't necessarily all interoperate with each other. You can see here the landscape. We've got a huge number of different software, we've got a huge number of different vendors that are producing IoT hardware and various versions of that IoT hardware. Some use uh, known standards, some use proprietary systems that don't conform to the standards and they don't necessarily publish those standards. The technology doesn't always work out of the box and might require firmware upgrades and things like that. And so with that fragmented platform, rather than just saying, well, everything's going to operate on Wi-Fi or everything's going to operate on Ethernet and having one system, we've got thousands of different systems and those thousands of different systems tend to confuse things a bit. Uh, our next is around privacy or freedom. And here we need to ask the question of how much information that is collected can be linked back to us personally or our operations or what we're doing or where we live or our families and things like that. What if, for example, governments wanted to use that information to uh, oppress citizens or um, crack down citizens or do things, um, find a certain number of people that they're unhappy with and do something about it? And things like that do happen around the world. And uh, in the past, you've had things like secret police, for example, that are reporting on people's uh, political affiliations and religious beliefs and, and all sorts of things, everything in between then, what they're actually doing. You've got the spying that's going on and uh, people spying on each other and being doing counter espionage and all sorts of things like that. And so there's a concern that, well, what are the government, how is the government going to use this personal data that might be personal to us? But beyond that, what if the systems weren't secure enough and whether it be in the transport or whether it be in the storage of that data, anyone could get access to that data. And so, for example, a hacker might be able to find out everything about what you're doing, what your, what your normal operations of a day are, and do... And there's huge cybersecurity threats with that, uh, identity theft threats with that, uh, all sorts of issues that can occur. So one question, one fundamental question we could ask is how much control should we have with the information that's collected about us? And you may have seen the movie 1984 or read the book. And this is really IoT gone wrong, where basically the government um, collects data about what we're thinking, what we're saying, what we're doing in our own houses, where we have no control of, the, of that data and the government oppresses its citizens as a result of that and tells them exactly what they can think and say, uh, and even sets a narrative, which is a narrative which is an untruthful narrative. And so this is a challenge for IoT to make sure that it's used for good and, and not for evil purposes. Data storage is another challenge around IoT. Now think about it, we've got billions of sensors constantly collecting data, some collecting a little bit of data, but some collecting huge amounts of data, particularly, um, sensors that collect visual data like photographs and video. Where do we store that data? How do we store that data? Who has access to that data? And how long should it be stored for? Should it be stored indefinitely? Well, we're, we're going to run out of space eventually, or should we wipe it uh, every 12 months? Um, how should we wipe it? How should it be eliminated in terms of security and things like that? How sensitive is this data that we're actually storing? And with sensitivity, well, security is one of those key issues around IoT. And I'd say the biggest challenge within IoT, really, because you've got billions of devices connected to the internet, made by thousands of different vendors, and some will have poor security. Uh, some will have out-of-date firmware. Some will have people just using the default passwords and not changing those passwords. Some IoT devices have been used in... Uh, distributed DOS or denial of service attacks where uh, devices end up becoming bots that uh, malware is uploaded to them. And so thousands of IoT devices can be pinging or directing traffic at a website or something to try and bring that website down. And you can use that by taking over these devices that have pretty poor security on them, but are also connected to the internet. So you can have not just one device that's trying to attack a server, but you can have thousands or potentially millions of devices doing so. 
Um, now, some IoT systems send data that's in unencrypted forms. And so the, the question is that, well, anyone could be receiving that data and listening to that data and decoding that data. So how secure does that data need to be? If you're just measuring the temperature, well, that probably doesn't matter if it's not encrypted because anyone could measure the temperature with their own temperature sensor. But if you're measuring something that needs some level of security, you need to make sure you have that security. One of the big questions is how do we keep up with all the exploits and um, devices that haven't been patched and having to patch new devices with new firmware? One example would be, well, if you've got a smart door lock on your, on your house, how often would you upgrade your firmware for your door lock? Normally, if we've got a key-based system, well, we wouldn't upgrade our uh, door lock unless it's someone smashed it or something like that, or unless we've lost our key and we know someone nefarious has stolen our key, for example. We might say, oh, we'll get it rekeyed. But in our IoT system, well, there might be an exploit that is put on the internet that can mean that anyone can open your door lock in five seconds by just pressing some things on their mobile phone. We wouldn't necessarily know about that unless the manufacturer contacted us and told us, but they probably won't. Uh, or we're out looking for it and we're trying to work out, is our system secure? And so we'd probably need to be on the lookout there of oh, what firmware around my IoT system, around my smart home, around my factory do I need to upgrade? Because systems like this that are insecure could result in people being spied on in their own home. And people could have access to their CCTV feeds, for example. They could know if someone's home, whether it's a good time to burgle their house or not. Safety is another concern around IoT systems. Some IoT systems are specifically safety-based. Things like um, smart door locks or uh, smart power points, um, chemical sensors, smoke detectors, uh, all those sort of things, what if they're not working? And what if people get, for example, with those door locks, get locked into an area that they can't get out of? Or what if those smoke detectors uh, aren't correctly reporting the information that they need to report? What if you have an app that's buggy and rather than irrigating an area based on a moisture sensor, what if that moisture sensor is giving some incorrect data or someone steps on it and breaks it and it's just, it just floods the area and turns on the irrigation 24 seven, for example. Uh, what, what, what should happen if communication's lost? Uh, recently I was talking to someone who was using one of the um, car share uh, systems like GoGet or something like that. And they were driving in a remote national park and they turned off their car and then they locked their car, and then when they went to unlock their car, their car wouldn't unlock. And they were using their key fob to try and unlock the car. And the problem was that there was no cellular coverage in the area that they were in, remote national park. And the car couldn't connect back to the base station to work out, does this person, should have, this person have access to this car? And so they were locked out of their own car. Now, that wouldn't happen if they just use a key or a remote control or something like that. We need to ask questions, for example, what happens if power is lost? Well, in a building where we've got uh, doors that are all governed by access control systems, uh, if the power is lost, should all the doors open or should all the doors unlock or should all the doors stay locked? We've got all sorts of safety concerns around that. What if there's a fire? What if the power goes out? You don't want people to be trapped in areas, but you don't want someone to be able to cut the power to a building and then all the doors will just automatically unlock and they can waltz in and steal all whatever's inside the building. And our final one that we'll mention is the obsolescence or change. There's lots of IoT vendors and there's lots of IoT vendors that have gone bust. They come up with an initial product, they get a prototype to market, it works, kind of, most of the time, but they run out of money or they run out of investors or um, parts of the product might not be working or they get some bad press on it. Who's going to maintain it? Who's going to issue firmware upgrades? Who's going to fix it when it dies in the field? Uh, and various cloud-based systems will change over time as well. And business models of those systems might change. For example, lots of people are using TTN, the Things Network, which started off as a free system that anyone could use. There was a whole lot of gateways that you could connect to. You upload a whole lot of data. You can have as many nodes as you want. And then they locked it down to uh, a subscription-based system where you pay uh, a certain amount of money per month. Uh, if you don't pay that money, you could still use it, but you could only have a uh, half dozen nodes or so. And so there are a whole lot of people, including me, that were called out with that, that 
you had to change all your hardware based on it. We, we need to upgrade and reflash our firmware to connect to a different system that's not using that things network anymore, using something else. If software or protocols change over time, well, we'll need to reflash hardware once again. Now, whose responsibility is that going to be?